everybody. Welcome back to the podcast, My Beyond the View, where I make the views table relatable. I relate the table dynamics to our everyday lives, that is. Fun to talk about. Come on in. Let's get started. Come on. Here we go. Here we go again. Come a bluff and you want to be my friend. Well, another hearty shout out to everyone listening to the podcast all around the world. Thank you guys so much for joining me for another episode. For those of you who are new, I'm glad you found me. I've been talking about The View, my favorite show, uh, for several years now. I originally started out just on YouTube, and now I the podcast is so many places, and I'm expanding and, and expanding to more locations. So wherever you're listening, if you're new, I am sure you have some very common questions like, who am I? All of those uh, answers to those commonly asked questions are in the description box, okay? I got a lot I want to chat to you about because our time together today is going to be a little bit different. So we're going to just go ahead and jump into this. Now, I will first start off by saying, guys, that, you know, I only talk about the view here. Uh, But today I'm going to do something a little bit different because we're going to have to talk about the Tamron Hall show because our girl, (laughs) Candy Carter, was involved in some stuff over there. And now there's this big rumor going around online and I want to address it. I want to talk about it because I am a huge fan of Candy Carter's and I'm an even bigger fan of The View and I don't like the way she was done. So yeah, (laughs) it's one of those kind of things. So a lot of you listening have not been with me for several years. So you don't know all the stories I've done on Candy. You don't know who Candy Carter is, or maybe you only know that she was executive producer of the Tamman Hall show. So we're going to talk about a little bit of the background first. I'm going to tell you all the players. We're going to then go into this latest rumor that I do not believe is true. And then we're going to talk about if Tamron Hall don't get her stuff together, sister, mm-hmm. your show going to be canceled. All right. Who is Candy? She's one of the best in the business. Candy started out in television tons and tons and tons of years. And after working in various venues, she then joined the Oprah Winfrey show, which was on television for 25 years. And the, the Oprah show was number one for 25 years straight. Candy was there the last 15 years of that 25 years. Matter of fact, during Oprah's, Oprah's 25th season, you know, when they were doing uh, so many uh, fan, fabulous shows and those that huge trip to Australia, I think they took everybody to Australia and all of that, Candy was a senior producer at that time, and she produced the highest rated Oprah Winfrey show in six years. Now, after Oprah retired her show, Candy started her own business, okay, in broadcasting. She did a whole lot of things. She also launched two talk shows. Remember when Kiki Palmer got her own talk show called Just Kiki? Guess who was the brainchild behind that? Candy Carter. Remember, remember the reality show Ice and Coco, you know, Ice Tea and Coco? Guess who was the brainchild behind that? Yes, Miss Candy Carter, okay? And I could rail off a whole lot of things. So listen, After doing all of that, The View was struggling in 20. Remember, they let go of Miss Barbara in 2013. They pretty much pushed her out the door, right? 2013, 2014, somewhere around that uh, time because Barbara Walters was allegedly, and I have to say allegedly because, you know, we got to protect ourselves legally here. Allegedly, Miss Barbara was beginning to show signs of a serious uh, mental health issue uh, during her final days there. Uh, after that, the view was still, you know, kind of doing okay. And then they let go of Bill Getty. We're going to talk about Bill Getty in just a moment because Tamron, sister girl, Tamron, if you can't work with all these people, they are not the problem. You are, but we're going to get to that in just, let me come, let me woosah. Hmm. I wish I had some of that woosah music. Okay. So let me pick up where I left off before I had to woosaw there. <laughs> so then in 2015, The View got rid of Bill Getty. Remember, The View was the brainchild of, Bar- brainchild of Barbara Walters. But who brought her uh, vision to fruition was Bill Getty. He had worked with her for over 20 years at that time on all of her fabulous, 
infamous 2020 specials, etc. And a lot of people left the show when they kicked off Barbara. They left the show after Bill was kicked out as executive producer. The show was suffering. Guess what they did? They brought the first person they brought in was Hillary Etsy McLaughlin. Those of you been with me, you've I've done a story on Hillary. Now they they uh, had to. Uh, kind of let go of her during COVID. Uh, they didn't have to, but we'll talk about that maybe some other time. Okay, so they brought in Hillary Etsy McLaughlin from CBS. Hillary had worked on the Rosie O show, all this, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, wasn't kind of making a dent in things. Things were still going terrible. Then they brought on the very first black executive producer who also was a woman who was Candy Carter. Candy came in in 2015 as this show was struggling on its last leg. And The View had been on television at that time for 18 years. They never had a black executive producer, male or female. So they got, you know, most of us in the black community know how some of these these businesses do, right? They get the two for one. They get their, they got their black quota and then they got their female quota, right? Black female, right? So they brought her in, executive producer. Guess what? She turned this whole show around. Candy was the executive producer for five years. In those five years, the ratings rose to the highest they'd been. She also, uh, uh, they won an Emmy under her reign for the most informative talk show. Also, The View was named by New York Times Magazine as the most important uh, political show in history under her reign. Under her reign, The View was inducted into the Broadcasting Hall of Fame. Okay, so she was there for five seasons. In 2020, when now here we're going to talk about this Tamron Hall mess. Tamron Hall was having a whole big problem over there. Tamron Hall is an ABC show, okay? Remember, The View is ABC, so this is these are a family of shows, okay, y'all? So, okay, I need to whistle again. Okay, hold on, y'all. Okay, let me calm myself down, Okay. All right, now that I've woo saw it, let's pick it back up, okay? So Tamron Hall was over there struggling with her show. Tamron's show had only been on at that point a year and a half. Guess who was the executive producer of Tamron Hall's show? Yes, those of you who with me, you heard me talk about it before. Bill freaking Getty. They pulled him, they being ABC, pulled this dude out of retirement to run Tamron Hall show. I made a whole story about it. I was so excited. I said, oh, with Bill Getty at the helm of Tamron's show, she can't lose. That show is going to probably be the next Oprah Winfrey show. Well, then the rumors started. Tamron's difficult to work with. Then all of a sudden, Bill Getty quit. We later learned he was allegedly fired. Him and Tamron couldn't get along. I immediately said to myself, something's wrong. If Tamron can't get along with Bill Getty, okay, something's wrong because he's one of the best in the business. Okay, so 2020, Candy leaves The View. Remember, she's still an ABC employee. So she transfers from The View and they move Candy. Candy goes over to Tamron Hall show and she becomes the executive producer for, excuse me, excuse me. Hold on. Hold on. I missed a step. Hold on, y'all. There was another lady in between and I actually, um, let me see. Let me make sure I get her name. Talia, because Talia, you may be listening. I don't want to screw your name up, girl. Okay. After Bill Getty, uh, you know, was let go, there was an interim executive producer. Her name is Talia Parkinson Jones. Okay. Talia reached out to me and I tried to respond to her and I don't know what happened uh, uh, with that. But anyway, Talia was sitting in, you know, until they could find someone permanently. Guess what? Talia quit. Okay. So see, now we got two people who are some of the best in this business, they both have, quote, quit or gotten fired or whatever. I think Talia left of her own accord, okay? So then after Talia in 2020, then comes Candy, okay? You guys still with me? I know this is a lot for those of you who are brand spanking new, but those of you who've been with me for years, you you know I capes for Candy Carter, okay? I capes for Bill Getty. I capes for Brian Tata, all right? See, there's a pattern going on over there at Tamron Hall, and Tamron's going to be canceled here shortly if she don't get her act together. But I'll get onto that shortly. All right. So Candy transfers from The View in 2020 during COVID to become the executive producer of Tamron Hall show. Guess what? Some of Tamron Hall. Okay. Let me calm down. Some of Tamron Hall's highest rated shows. Guess who they were under? You got it. You got it. Candy 
freaking Carter. Then, all of a sudden, a few weeks ago, we get the word that Candy quits Tamron's show. And I'm like, okay, there's a huge problem. See, now there's three people that's quit. You know what it reminded me of? Uh, those of you who were with me when we were reviewing Ramin's book, Ladies Who Punch, the explosive inside story of The View. For those of you listening internationally, that's the very first book, the only book written about ABC's The View. It was a New York Times freaking bestseller. We, we reviewed the entire book here on the channel, okay? One of the things that we learned, okay, in that book is that when Rosie O'Donnell had her own talk show, she went through seven, count them seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven producers in four months. So see, when you have people that say, oh, it's the producer's fault. Wait a minute, girl, you went through seven people in four months. Uh Uh-uh, it ain't them, it's you. You're the problem. And we're seeing the same thing start to happen with Tamron Hall. Okay, so we just learned that Candy quit. First, the story was that uh, Candy, uh, you know, that she just quit and that she was going to take on a new job at ABC. Now the Daily Mail has produced this this exclusive story today, guys, about this rumor. Now let me tell you about the rumor. Okay, so now that Tamron, excuse me, Candy is no longer at Tamron. Tamron has, you know, there's nobody over there now executive producing. They're scrambling to find somebody. The rumor is that Candy doesn't really have a new job at ABC and that she's going to be replacing Brian Tetta because allegedly the executives were upset with how he handled that whole show with Kamala Harris and that, of course, uh, you know, the HIPAA, vi- HIPAA laws were violated because, you know, even though we didn't know at the time the re- test results of, of Anna and Sonny, excuse me, Anna, yeah, and Sonny were inaccurate, it was told to the world that they were COVID-19 positive. You get what I'm saying? So allegedly there was a whole lot of hoopla about how he handled that show and how displeased people were. So now the rumor is that Candy, since she's now not working, allegedly, even though she's still uh, getting a check from ABC, she's still an ABC employee, that they're going to bring her back to The View and get rid of Brian Tetta and put Candy in his place. Okay. I will say regarding that rumor, okay, I don't know whether it's true or not. But all I know is that Brian and Candy worked together as a team at The View for five years. I would think that if there's some some piece of a truth here, it might be that they're going to bring her back to The View and reinstate her as the executive producer or make her the senior executive producer. Because, guys, the only (laughs) executive producer they have right now is Brian. I don't believe they're going to get rid of Brian over that one show. But listen, let me tell you something else that they're saying out here. They're saying that there was such anticipation for Kamala's appearance because this was going to be her first time on The View as sitting vice president of the United States. Every other time she was there, she was Senator Harris. You get or she was running for the office of president. So they're saying that the executives were so upset because this was huge for The View. This was going to be ratings gold. You get what I'm saying? Not only that, the rumor also was, and this really wasn't a rumor because Kamala's office pretty much confirmed it uh, in so many words. Kamala's office was quite frustrated with The View because, you know, she had changed her entire schedule, okay, to come to New York to do the show only for it to fumble, you know, and it was a mess. You get what I'm saying? Again, I don't blame Brian for that. I'll talk to you guys about that later. Right now, we just want to focus on Candy, this rumor, this mess at Tamron Hall. So anyway, so we're just going to, we're going to have to just follow this, okay? You just check back here. I'll keep you up to date on if we happen to find out now uh, that this rumor is true. Here's something else that kind of is very suspicious to me. About a year and a half ago, Whoopi made it, you know, they had come back from a commercial break. This is when they were still filming remotely. Whoopi said that Brian Tetta was retiring. Do you guys remember that? I talked about it here. And I was like, okay, why is Brian retiring? I mean, Brian is in his late 40s. He's married. He has two children. I don't think Brian is rich. 
So can he afford to retire? Then I said to you guys, well, maybe he has some serious health issues because this stuff is stressful, y'all. Running a show, I can only imagine. And then he's a guy and you got to deal with all these women and their hormones and their mood swings. And, and, and they're not easy to deal with. Some of them have very difficult personalities to deal with. you know. And then you got to handle the rumor mill and people talking about you. It's very, very stressful, okay? So anyway, so I was saying to you guys, well, maybe he's sick. Because Whoopi said Brian is retiring. Well, then all of a sudden, Brian never retired. Brian was there. So, you know, now that this rumor is out that they may be replacing him with Candy, I don't know, guys. All I know is, is that Brian has worked very hard. Everybody has worked very hard to make this show what it is. And if there's, if there, if this is what's going to happen, it would be an extreme loss to them. Uh, but we'll, like I said, we're just going to follow this and see. Now, as I end, let me talk about Tamron Hall. Mm -hmm. So let me read you just a few snippets here from uh, the Daily Mail exclusive article. It says, um, it's Tamron's way or the highway. Tamron Hall show executive producer Candy Carter quits as insiders claim she clashed with the host and say the talk show is bleeding staff due to a toxic work environment. That's the exact same thing that they were reporting when Bill quit. The exact same thing when Talia quit. So guys, here, like I said earlier in the podcast, this is a pattern. Now, talking about making the table relatable, talking about this podcast being about life, this is the bottom line. This is a rule I've used for myself since I was in my middle 20s. If more than one person who knows me says the same thing about me, it must be true. Because I'm the common denominator in all of these uh, business or friendships. So, for instance, in Tamron's case, there are three people. So let me just make it personal. Let's just say uh, in one business relationship, I had a problem with that boss. And, well, I thought it was the boss. And I went around saying the boss is so crazy. She's this, she's that, or he's this, he's that. Okay. That boss leaves, another boss comes. And I say the same thing. Oh, I can't get along. This boss is, she's just crazy. He's just crazy. Okay, that boss leaves. Then the next boss. And all three bosses say... My view on The View is difficult to work with. She has her own mind. She doesn't really want to do what we ask her. All three bosses say the same thing about me. None of them know each other, but they all know me. I'm the common denominator. So because these people didn't know each other, they couldn't have gotten together and cooked it up about me. So it must be true. That is always the test I have for myself because you cannot, right, y'all? All of us who are more seasoned in age and in life, you cannot believe every single thing that people say about you. Even the people you love, even your spouse, because sometimes people see things or your boyfriend, girlfriend or whatever the situation is. People see things, uh, see their experiences with you through their own filter. So you got to always judge, you know, people's criticisms of you uh, bal in a balanced way. OK, you got to say, is it really me or is it them? OK, you get what I'm saying? And so now let's get back to Tamron. So I'm going to apply this same test to Tamron. It's now the third executive producer. And these people, like I said, were the best in the business. Top notch. People, any, sh any show would love to have candy. That's why ABC isn't going to let her go. That's why even though she's not technically working, she's still going to check from them. They're not going to let candy go. That's why, I mean, Bill Getty was top notch. Talia, top notch. Three top notch folk. And every single time they leave, everybody says the same thing. It's Tamron's way or the highway. Tamron won't listen. Why on earth do you think people like Talia, people like Bill Getty, and people like Candy Carter uh, were part of some of these iconic shows? It's because Oprah and other people listened to their executive producers. Sure, they had. Sure, your show, it had the name. I mean, you, the show is yours. But you're, you're not, you're not, uh, you can't lead a shit. You can't lead this alone. You got to have people who are skilled in their field, who you trust. But if you don't trust anybody and you think everybody's trying to take your show from you, Tamron, and everybody's trying to take, you know, that is not going to work because you can't lead a successful talk show alone and talent ain't enough. And I'm, can I just tell you the real truth? And I don't mean to be ugly. And I did think about this before I decided to say it because I knew I was going to say this to y'all. And I said to myself, are you saying this because you're upset? <laughs> because you're a fan of fan, more of a fan of Candy Carter's and Tamron's. I had to check myself. What is the real reason I feel this way? What's the real reason I'm going to say this on the podcast today? And it all checked out clear. OK, so I'm going to say this. 
when it comes to talented TV hosts, when I think about, you know, Tamron, I, I wouldn't say that Tamron is super duper talented in what she's doing. Would you? Tamron's beautiful. Tamron seems to be kind. Uh, Tamron seems to be a good interviewer. But would I say that Tamron, uh, at this point in her talk show skills development, is going to be somebody that would be a great loss if her show went off the air? Uh, the answer is no. And I think you know what I mean. So it's like, girl, uh, ABC has given you the best of the best. And if you can't work with any of them, it is not them. It is you. These rumors about you are true. And if you don't fix it and, and hush <laughs> and start listening to these people and let them help you run that show, you are going to run your own show in the ground. And as I end, I will say this, you know, very often I hear people like Tamron who are who uh, who are um, religious people or spiritual people, may we say, say, you know, well, God gave me this second chance. You know, we, we've he heard this from many people in the business uh, when she was fired from the Today Show or let, whatever you want to call it. And she didn't have uh, she wasn't working for a long time and she had to reprioritize and she had wanted to be married and have a child for so long. And in the same time frame, she got married. She had a baby. She got her own talk show. I remember Tamron saying that she really felt like this, you know, this was her time that God was blessing her, that what she had prayed for for so long, it seemed that everything was coming to fruition at the same time. Here's the bottom line. God can give us things and God does give, give us the desires of our heart, but we can screw them up. All of us who are honest people can look at our own lives and say amen to that. And we can't then go back and blame God and say, God, why did you let no? The bottom line, as I said before on many other podcasts, God is not controlling anybody's life. God is not a controlling being. He's a loving being. And when you truly love people, you give them a choice. And if they choose to destroy themselves, you don't intervene in that. If they choose success, you don't intervene in that. Love truly gives people a choice. Now, God will lead and he will guide and he will advise and he will endeavor to correct because it's not God's desire that any of us perish or ruin our lives. But here's the key. If we refuse to listen, because God is not going to force anything on me, on you, on anybody. If we refuse to listen, we make our own way hard. There is a scripture that I love that says the way of the rebellious is hard. What does that mean? If we choose to fight against uh, people, things that are endeavoring to help us on our on the path that we are on in our lives, we are making our own ways hard. So Bill Getty, she couldn't work with him. Talia, she couldn't work with Talia. Now she couldn't work with Candy. Who will it be next, y'all? Who will it be next before Tamron ruins her own show? Ruins the what she called uh, the blessing from God. How long? And here's something else I will say. One of the th other things that I was concerned about is, you know, um, her whole situation with her husband. Now, yeah, I'm, I'm getting in her business now. But um, I remember uh, her son, Moses, um, she was having him on camera a lot. And then one time she said her husband did not like that, that he did not want their son to be on. You know, guys, you got to be very careful with your children online. I think all of us know that. One of the reasons why I don't even say a lot of personal things is because, I mean, I've been on YouTube long enough. I've had some incidents where I learned the hard way. I have to be safe on here because not everyone listening means me well. Not everybody watching Tamron with her son live on TV means her well, means that child well. So her husband was only doing the, the job of a father, of a husband saying, we need to be more protective. Let's keep him off TV so much. Well, she said no. She said, this is what I've always wanted. And so, you know, she kept him on television. I, I knew then, I knew then, well, that marriage won't last long. It won't last long. It won't last long because Tamron wanted a baby, I think, more than she wanted a husband. Kind of the same thing with Kenya Moore. It's kind of one of those situations where Kenya Moore wanted a baby more than she wanted a husband. You see? And when Kenya's husband start trying to advise her in certain things, not tell her what to do. We're not talking about men controlling women. We're talking about just the man you've chosen 
okay, to, to build a life with making an, you know, giving you advice or trying to advise you and something he sees that you're doing that could be dangerous. Well, if we refuse to listen, you know, those relationships normally don't work out like Kenya's situation. And, and I tell you, we'll hear about Tamron soon because I thought, wow, she was just, she just, and then she went out and told the public, I, I told him, this is my child. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing what she said, but this is my child and this is my show and I want him. Okay. OK. And see, if you're going to go out and tell people that kind of stuff, what are you what's really going on behind the scenes? So, guys, I'm going to let you go. This has been a long, but I really want to get out my full thoughts on this. I don't know. Like I said, I'll watch and see what happens with Candy. Will she return to The View? It would be great if she did. It would be great if she and, and Brian could resume their their the team that they had there. But we're just going to have to watch and see. But at any rate, guys, those of you who watch the Tamron Hall show, I don't. I've watched certain episodes like when Nene was on there. I watched that one when Kirk Franklin was on there. I watched that one. But to watch it day to day, I'm not interested in her show that much. And and not to mention, you know, like I said, uh, this whole talk show uh, arena is so saturated with folk that, you know, you really got to choose one and be done, right? You get what I'm saying? So those of you who are fans of Tamron Hall show and you watch it all the time, let us know in the comments, if you're listening, where you can make a comment, what do you think about her now losing her third executive producer under the same circumstances of saying, of people saying they just, she just won't listen. It's her way or the highway. Nobody can work with her. The staff is just so toxic over there. What do you think about that? And then what do you think about this rumor? That's now out there that because people think Brian fumbled the show, you know, allegedly the executives executives think that that they're going to get rid of him and they're going to bring back candy. So what do you think? Let us all know if you can. And now if you're listening somewhere else where you're not able to make comments, don't forget to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whichever, you know, you think. And of course, don't forget to rate the podcast. I will talk to you guys later. Let's just keep an eye on all this. If you.